Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to talk about the natural IT in Hibernate 5. Uh, already we had a little conversation about the natural ID, how we can define natural ID in our uh, Hibernate entity class. So that's the way to define basically. Uh, def define a natural ID in your entity class, you will have to declare a basic variable and that variable you'll have to annotate as at natural id right so once you define a variable as a natural id then hibernate is gonna apply unique constraint on this variable right so hibernate is having some apis through which you can retrieve an entity by its identifier or primary key hibernate also provides few apis through which you can retrieve an entity uh, by a natural id uh, primary key is not updatable by the nature itself in Hibernate but uh, when you define a property as a natural ID then by default natural ID is immutable you cannot change natural ID but uh, there are some way to there is some way to uh, make it mutable uh, natural ID so that's the thing we are going to learn in this video tutorial how we can make a natural ID mutable or changeable right so here uh, i have already created this project and there are a lot of files i'm going to explain each and every files so first of all we have a pom.xml and there i have specified uh, two dependency first dependency for mysql connector java and second dependency i have specified the uh, hibernate which contains the latest version 5 to 12 now we have a hibernate cfg.xml file which contains all the hibernate related properties and here we are using the database name is called test which is running on the my my, my sql server is running on the 4406 and we have a two entity class person and book so in person uh, you can see person is one entity class and a uh, book is another entity class and there is one to many relationship from person to book and another side we have a book entity class which is having some basic properties one of the properties called isb and that we are we have defined as a natural id so here uh, here we have a class is called persistent pers persist entity client test and there we are going we have created one person object which we have treated as a author and we have created a two books and we have associated with the same author author one and uh, finally we are saving the authors along with author uh, list of books will be saved as, uh, as well right because uh, if you go to the Persian class then we have given the cascade type all right and all also includes the persist cascade type and that's the reason when you save the person then along with the Persian list of books will be saved as well okay so that's all about this classes one more class we have a hibernate util class which is responsible to provide us session factory we have a factory method uh, when client calls get factory method then this session factory gets created in the static block and same will be returned to the client now uh, what i'll do uh, in my database i'm going to delete this these two tables and uh, what i'll do i'm going to run this uh, client which will basically create our database table for us in the test data schema and that will create two tables and that will insert records into our database so let's refresh and here you can see there is a one record in the person and book table there is two records right now uh, i'll go to the uh, here another class read and update by natural id test uh, let me rename this guy natural natural ID yeah, that's fine no problem so here first of all what I'll do I'll retrieve a book entity by its primary key we have a get method and here I would say book dot class and book ID I'm going to pick book ID I will say 2L so our book id is type of long that's what i have written to l and here i'm going to pass this book id and we'll retrieve the 
book entity from the database and here we are going to check if book not equal to null that means uh, book is ex existing with the primary key 2 and here what I'll do I'll begin a transaction I'd say sorry session dot begin transaction and uh, after that we'll retrieve the existing transaction by calling uh, get transaction and we'll try to commit and between this what I'll I'll try to make some change in this uh, persistent book right so here I'm going to change the ISBN so let's see whether we can change ISBN or not and what hibernate says suppose I want to change this ISBN for book ID 1 so current ISBN is something like this I will say uh, nine two two something like this and uh, let's run this program and let's see what happens oops we got some error so let's see what is the error so here if you go to console eclipse console then here you can see what error is coming saying that uh, hibernate exception arg dot hibernate dot hibernate exception and saying that an immutable natural identifier of entity book was altered from this value to this value saying that you are trying to alter uh, uh, one immutable properties right and that is a natural id so by default by, by default uh, immutable id is uh, sorry uh, uh, by default uh, your natural id is uh, by the nature it's a uh, immutable so if you want to make it mutable then you need to specify one property is called mutable equals to true. and once you modify this and after that if you run this application then let's see what happens cool now you are able to update it right so here you can see uh, first of all select operation has been performed and after that hibernate has performed update query if you go to the database then uh, right now your ISBN starts from 978 if you refresh then uh, that changed as a 922 right and that's the uh, that's the uh, basically ISBN we want to do change for natural ID 2 no, uh, primary key 2 right now that is that has been changed sorry guys I told you this ISBN but we wanted to make change for this ISBN now your ISBN is uh, mutable right and that's the way to make uh, ISBN as mutable one thing you, you can observe here Hibernate has uh, only uh, only selected ISB, ISBN column uh, by default uh, hibernate will uh, try to uh, fetch uh, try to uh, hibernate will try to update the all columns by default but here we have specified uh, as a dynamic update and that's the reason whatever column value will change and that column will be included in the update query right if you do not specify this add dynamic update then what will happen let me change ISBN once more and I would say 3 3 now at this time Hibernate is gonna include all column see Hibernate is trying to update in set clause Hibernate is trying to update for author ID ISBN publish state as well as title but uh, what we want we want to uh, uh, here we want to change value for the ISBN only so in set clause only ISBN is ISBN supposed to be included right basically Hibernate uh, try to read all value and thus try to override and that's the that's the that's the problem with the Hibernate and this problem you can overcome by annotating your uh, book entity basically by a dynamic update so once you specify the dynamic update then Hibernate will identify what are the properties is going to modify those modified properties going to include in the uh, this set clause or update queries so after mod, uh, specifying that annotation add dynamic update so if you change it again like 4 4 then only at this time ISBN is going to include and now if you change some other stuff as well right uh, here uh, 
book is having some uh, other property like uh, uh, ISBN and you can say publish date so let's say publish date we are going to include as well so at this time Habernet is going to include two column value right publish date as well as uh, ISBN because two property we have modified over here and if I run it then you can see now Habernet has included oops, Habernet has only included uh, uh, ISBN reason is that uh, uh, basically uh, this date is already in the database right so that's what uh, hibernate did not update uh, this uh, uh, column value if hibernate will when you try to fetch hibernate uh, any uh, entity with the primary key then what happens hibernate keeps the state of this object into the uh, session cache and when you modify some property value then that will match with that cache and whatever value uh, is different from the database and so only those columns will get updated and that's the reason Hibernate is not including this date this date is already in the database right so today is it so that's what Hibernate did not include this uh, value right so if you can try for the other like title you can change so for uh, ISBN 944 title we can change right so here what i we can do title we are going to update as well so at this time let's say i'm going to specify 33 so isbn we are going to change as well as uh, title i would say 2 hibernate persistence constant at this time hibernate is going to uh, include two column Now you can see I have an include ISBN as well as title. So whatever modified value is there, that's going to include in the update query. I hope you understood what's the meaning of dynamic uh, update. So that's all. And one more thing uh, I wanted to show you. Uh, <coughs> we can also read uh, entity by its natural ID. So, and that's very easy to do so here we have a session and session is having method is called by natural id so here i'm going to include a book dot class sorry guys and we have a method is called using dot using and here i'm going to include property name is called isbn and we want to read uh, uh, this entity by its natural ID so this natural ID I'm going to pass it over here and we can call a method is called load so this is gonna return your book information let's say book 2 so here I'm not going to print the all values for this book let's print only title and let's see what value comes out sorry Now if I run it, so cool here you can see we are able to retrieve the value for title for a book whose ISBN is this right but at this time Hibernate did not fire at update query right so first of all Hibernate selects data uh, first of all Hibernate basically uh, selects data and when Hibernate finds there is no changes in the state which you are sending from here and that is available on the database side if both are matching then Hibernate will not uh, update a trigger uh, uh, Hibernate will not update a uh, uh, Hibernate will not trigger any update query right so when you retrieve uh, entity first time that that gets get saved into the session cache and when you try to update that, that will match from the cache value, right? Which previously we have retrieved. If both is getting matched, that means there is no change in the state, and, and that's the what that's what Hibernate will not trigger any update query. And this is the way to retrieve uh, entity by the natural ID. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video tutorial, guys. This code I'm going to check in on the GitHub and GitHub location. I will specify in the video description. So thanks for watching this video, and see you next video tutorial.